50 things we didn't know one year ago. Someone sent me this list of 50 things we learned during 2009. A lot of, so many of them actually conflict directly with anybody who interprets the Bible literally. And we've had so many of these people on our show recently saying the universe is no more than 6,000 years old, dinosaurs never existed, so on and so forth. The list itself would be almost impossible to even believe that we learned these things if you subscribe to that. I mean, I was going through it. Listen to this. Analysis of Greenland ice, Greenland ice samples shows Europe froze solid in less than a year about 13,000 years ago. Once triggered, the cold lasted 1,300 years. If you subscribe to the Earth and universe is 6,000 years old, you just don't believe that. Basic scientific discovery from 2009, you don't believe it. Here's another one. One mutated gene is the reason humans have language and chimpanzees, our closest relative, do not. That sounds like evolution to me, Lewis. And if you believe the Bible literally, that can't believe that either. A fossil skeleton of a dinosaur was discovered in South Africa, and it appears to be the missing link between the earliest dinosaurs that walked on two legs and the large plant-eating ones that walked on all four. Lewis, again, that sounds suspiciously like evolution to me. And we know we've had a lot of guests on this show that simply don't believe that. Um, the oldest known silicon spider webs date back 140 million years were discovered in England, preserved in amber. Hey, the earth is only 6,000 years old. That They didn't discover that. That one's not true. Remains were discovered in China of a flying reptile named Darwinopterus, and they could be a missing link between the short-tailed pterodactyls and the huge long-tailed descendants. Again, a link between species, that sounds like evolution to me. And here's another one. Polar bear, bear skulls have shrunk 2% to 9% since the early 20th century. It's the result, scientists believe, of stress from pollution and the melting habitat. That sounds like evolution to me. Right. And, you know, over the years, a lot of people have gotten smarter about it. And, you know, even people who believe in God don't believe that the earth was made 6,000 years ago. There's still plenty of people who believe in evolution. That's right. And still believe that there is, you know, a creator. But there is a... A, a strong contingent that l literally does not believe that. Right. They take the Bible word for word. Here's a couple other ones that don't have this religious component to them, but were interesting. Scientists discovered how to scan brain activity and convert what people are seeing or remembering into crude video images. And that, that one, that's one that I know a lot of people that are scared. People are scared of that. It's will pretty amazing. Will somebody be able to see what I'm thinking? And this isn't exactly that, but it, it's close. Um, the higher a patient's body mass index, the less respected the less respect they get from doctors. And I, I don't know that we needed 2009 to discover that. I think we could have guessed that, right, could right. we not? Um, the calmest place on Earth is on top of an icy plateau in Antarctica known as Ridge A. It's several hundred miles from the South Pole. It's so still that stars don't even twinkle because there's absolutely no turbulence in the atmosphere to distort the light. Um, the human body actually has a glow. It's a thousand times less than what eyes can detect, but pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Cockroaches hold their breath for five to seven minutes at a time, and watermelon is actually more efficient at rehydrating human bodies than drinking water because it has 92% water and a ton of rehydrating salts. That's an interesting one. Right. Well, like, you know, like Gatorade and Powerade. Sure. But you wouldn't think that watermelon, I don't know that. True. Yeah. True. So all of these things, things that we didn't know before 2009 that we learned during the year, many of them simply wouldn't be believed by the, the very religious extreme component that we've had on the show that believes even dinosaur bones, uh, dinosaur fossils were planted by God to make it seem... Right, a divine hoax. A divine hoax. Absolutely right. But Rush Limbaugh has a healthcare scare. He was hospitalized for chest pains while on vacation in Hawaii. Everything turned out to be okay. He went on a tangent at a press conference about how great American healthcare is. And you know what? I have to agree with him. If you are a billionaire and you live in the U.S., you're going to get absolutely great health care. Let's take a listen to his press conference. A Fox News alert. I'm Greg Jarrett in New York. Conservative radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh speaking about his condition at a hospital in Hawaii. Let's listen. The afternoon. The first thing I want to do is, um, is thank the people at the Kahala Hotel and Resort, the general manager there, uh, Thomas Pauley, and their security staff reacted like that to my distress call at 2.30 on, on Wednesday afternoon. The people here at Queens Hospital could not have been better. I feel uh, very, very fortunate. I have uh, I've been treated to the best health care the world has to offer, and that is right here in the United States of America. 
Uh, also, I, 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 I'm overcome uh, with all of the, the prayers, the, the cards and the flowers that have come in from people all over the country. Uh, it has been a very humbling experience. Now, all of my life, I've wondered what a heart attack would be like. I've never had any heart disease. I've never had any problem with it. At 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon, I experienced pain in my upper left chest like I had never experienced before. I sat down. I walked around. Uh, nothing abated. I got on the phone and, uh, and, and called the security staff at the Kahala, and the security people were up there instantly. EMT came in instantly, and I think within 20 minutes I was here at the hospital undergoing extensive tests. Uh, they alleviated the pain problem within a half hour. Okay, so he underwent extensive tests. Um, I, I've always wondered also what it would be like for Rush Limbaugh to have a heart attack. That's one. That's, those are two things that Rush Limbaugh and I have both thought about, mm -hmm. interestingly enough. Uh, I, I can't disagree with him. We, you, if you're a billionaire, you will absolutely get the best care money you can buy in the U.S. There's no question about that. Barbara Boxer hit below the ovaries yesterday with Condoleezza Rice. What can we say? There's, there's no disagreeing. Now, when he went on later on into his political tirade about this is absolutely the best health care period for anybody, that I'm not so sure of. A hotly debated topic. Sports stories. Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach has been fired following an investigation about how he treats his players. Apparently, Texas Tech receiver Adam James accused Leach of confining him to small, dark places after he was diagnosed with a concussion. Bizarre story. Very strange. Very strange. A lot of people on both sides of this one. And in the NBA, uh, Gilbert Arenas and Javaris Crittenden drew guns on each other during a Christmas Eve gambling dispute. Crittenden became angry when Arenas refused to make good on a gambling debt and shouted, I'm not your punk. That's when they pulled guns on each other. A friend of Crittenden said that Arenas was effing with him and Crittenden was just defending himself. Um, Arenas says he brings unloaded guns from home and stores them in his locker all the time just to keep them away from his kids. Right, right, because he's such a, such a high target. Bizarre stories. It's incredible. Some people calling the NBA the NRA. And I'm a big fan of basketball, love the Celtics, and... Watch. There's a lot of wannabe gangsters in the NBA. There's though. a lot of bizarre, uh, yes, it's, it's very weird what's been going on in the NBA lately. And you can't help but feel like Commissioner David Stern is almost just taken aback by it and let more and more on the outskirts every year. He seems more and more out of place within the league uh, every game, it seems like. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I'm not as big a fan as you, but uh, well, you know, I do it, like the sport. You know, go Celtics. You're more of a football guy, I guess. I am. Well, uh, following up on the national arson story from uh, our t uh, city of Northampton, Massachusetts, this um, we have had a suspect. It's uh, a, an individual that we actually went to school with who was being charged for two murders. He set about 15 fires, and this made national front page news on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. Um, I was at the arraignment yesterday. It was a bizarre, very uh, tragic scene. The two people who died as a result of one of the fires he set um, are, are going to be, uh, presumably, uh, he will be brought to justice. He is being charged with two murders. And my understanding is that even though it still has to be proven that it was in fact murder, when it is arson, when the fire is set deliberately, even if there, there was not intent to kill with the fire, it is automatically murdered. That's my understanding after talking to a couple of lawyers. There's always exceptions to absolutely every case. Oh yeah. And we won't know th the next step of the trial won't even be until March 5th. Um, so it's a story that it seems to be wrapping up and one of the few national stories that originates here in Northampton, Massachusetts, uh, and, and a lot of people both concerned, but also in some way relieved that there has at least been someone brought to justice. Hopefully this doesn't give anyone, uh, any brilliant ideas elsewhere in the country. That's right. Um, that's it for this week. Midweekpolitics.com is the website. Please visit our website and sign up for the Midweek Politics newsletter. You can also check us out on YouTube at midweekpolitics dot or rather at youtube dot com slash midweek politics. Thanks for listening. I'm David Pakman and we will see you next week. You are listening to Midweek Politics with Dave Pakman.